Okay, so back to complete the last of the meiosis notes. Um, I hope up to this point you are uh, knowledgeable on meiosis, the whole process, the purpose for meiosis. Um, we saw how it's supposed to work. We saw what happens when it doesn't work correctly with non-disjunctions, uh, a lot of the syndromes that, that, that develop. Um, this last little bit is, I don't know if it's necessarily in the right place, uh, but since we're talking about childbirth and things like that and syndromes, and uh, I'm gonna address the idea of twins here, right? In this section, again, it could be moved into different locations in the semester, but uh, I elected to put it here. So um, when we talk about twins, um, we first have to define some terms and, and make it a little bit more technical, right? So. I'm gonna address first the identical twins. We call monozygotic twins. Mono meaning one, zygote. And the zygote is that first fertilized uh, cell. So sperm fertilizes the egg, that moment of conception where we transition from, from haploid plus haploid to diploid or diploid. So again, that is that we, we, mom ovulated one egg, it became fertilized like it's supposed to, that's completely normal. Um, it undergoes mitosis, cell junctions are supposed to form, if you remember tight junctions and desmosomes and gap junctions. So those are supposed to solidify and, and, and hold this little cluster of cells together. For whatever reason, again I don't know the exact reason why this happens, um, those junctions don't hold properly. So monozygotic twins is a cell junction issue. So we could present monozygotic twins in chapter seven with, with cell junctions at the end of chapter seven. So um, this basically, it, it functions like a cancer cell. If you remember when we talk about uh, metastatic cancer cells that, that, that break apart from each other, this embryo breaks apart. It's not supposed to do that, right? Mom did everything right. She ovulated one egg. It was fertilized, normal, no non-disjunctions. Everything was perfect. The embryo grew, but the embryo split apart and it split apart into two little clusters here. So each one of these will, will continue down its own genetic path and its own uh, developmental path, right? So in the, in the sort of situation where we have monozygotic twins, both individuals will be the same sex. If one is a boy, the other one will be a boy. If one is a girl, the other one will, will be a girl. Why? Because they were the same individual. They started life as the same individual. They just split during the developmental process. So begin life as one individual, embryonic cells break apart to produce two genetically identical individuals. So they're 100% genetically identical. Um, so yeah, so they're, they look the same, look the same, look the same. Um, if one is a girl, the other one's a girl, one is a boy, there's a girl, and this is the idea of monozygotic twins. Now, if it happened to break into three little fragments or four little fragments, then we get triplets or quadruplets. Um, but as long as there was only one egg ovulated, we end up with this monozygosity, right? So if for whatever reason the, the cell start or that, that cluster of cells starts to break, but a few of them do what they're supposed to and hold, those cell junctions are viable, uh, they, they, they actually connect the cells properly, we have a sort of a partial but incomplete splitting at this stage here. So imagine this starts to break apart, but doesn't break apart. A few cells stay connected. We end up with an incomplete splitting and have these conjoined twins. So uh, they started life as one. It started to separate, didn't separate correctly. So it should have produced monozygotic twins. First of all, it shouldn't have produced any twins, but if it's going to break, let it break completely to have then monozygotic twins. It didn't break completely, so we have then these conjoined twins. And depending on, on what particular area, which little cluster of cells stayed intact, that determines where the connection will be. If they're connected at the hip, at the chest, at the head, it depends on which cell stayed connected again. And, and, and again, it, it should not have 
stayed connected. It gets into weird, right? First, it shouldn't have split, but if it's going to split, let it split all the way. It did not do that. The second category of twins is what we call dizygotic twins, also known as fraternal twins. So, and this happens, ladies, uh, sometimes with each cycle, you don't ovulate just one egg. You might ovulate two eggs, right? So bloop, bloop, two eggs are ovulated. So we have two eggs uh, viable for fertilization. They get fertilized by their own separate sperm. Each one of these continues down its own developmental path. And basically these siblings are only 50% identical. Again, no more similar than siblings born at different times. So the same thing as you and your older brother or younger sister. Um, they're the same genetic relatedness. They just happen to have shared one same pregnancy, right? They can share possibly the same uh, placenta. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. It can get a little bit elaborate there. But the whole point here is everything worked normally, right? Nothing split apart. The, the issue was there was just multiple eggs ovulated. There were two eggs ovulated. And again, there's a lot of sperm there present. So basically, this is the situation that gives us our dizygotic or fraternal twins. So in this situation, you can have a male and a male, a male and a female, or two females. So they don't, they're not clones of each other. They're not identical. So two separate eggs, two separate sperm, two separate fertilization events. And this is very typical when, um, let's say, mom is trying to conceive or couples trying to conceive. Uh, mom is given uh, fertility medication to help her ovulate multiple eggs to try to increase the chances of fertilization happening. So that will increase, that will speed up the time when she reaches menopause but it increases the chance that she will produce a viable pregnancy, right? So, um, yeah, so if these two told you, hey, we're twins, say, ah, no, they don't look like twins. Well, they can be twins if they're dizygotic twins, right? Could have different color hair, different features. Uh, it can get interesting, right? So depending on, on what kind of situation um, mom may find herself or what kind of extracurricular activities are going on. Uh, there have been reports where, let's say, the sperm of one male fertilized one egg, the sperm of, of another male fertilized another egg. So remember, sperm can be viable for, uh, for several hours within the female system. So, um, and there's a, that fertility window of about three days. So within that that time, again, depending on the activities that's going on, we could, you know, not theoretically, it has happened where you have two children born at the same time, but with different uh, dads. So, again, you can get a little bit dramatic there, I guess. Novella, soap opera stuff there. So, just to, to compare and contrast, monozygotic one egg, dizygotic two eggs. Dizygotic, no splitting of the embryo. Monozygotic, yes, splitting of the embryo. So monozygotic, 100% identical. Dizygotic, only 50% identical. And again, depending on how many eggs are ovulated, we could end up with triplets, quadruplets of the dizygotic situation as well. So factors that increase the odds of having twins. And some of you think, wow, this is so cool to have twins or ah, I don't want to want to have twins, right? But um, again, there are a couple of factors that increase the chances. Again, one, the advancing age of mom. So which kind of goes back to number of previous pregnancies. So as mom gets older, again, estrogen levels fluctuate more and there's a greater chance that she can ovulate more eggs each uh, ovulation cycle. Right? So, which may cause ovaries to release more than one egg at a time. So, the more eggs that are ovulated, the greater the chance of um, uh, dizygotic pregnancies. Heredity, a woman is more likely to conceive fraternal twins if she is a fraternal twin, has already had fraternal twins, or has siblings who are fraternal twins. So, this goes back again to the, uh, just the genetic tendency to ovulate multiple eggs at once. Um, all of these are kind of natural and, and really just 
happen. You know, uh, the artificial one is uh, when, when again, when women do take the medication to ovulate on purpose, multiple eggs per cycle. And, and again, that all of these having an impact on uh, basically dizygotic pregnancies. Monozygotics, again, there can be a hereditary factor uh, which could go back to cell junction formation. If, if there's just something that uh, a person inherits that, that leads to weak cell junctions, that can increase the odds of having monozygotic twins, but it can also have other complications because that means that cell junctions throughout the body are not solidifying properly. So again, different situations that can lead to these different pregnancies there, right? So with that, um, that concludes our meiosis chapter, meiosis section, and gives you some things to process and think about. Uh, I will try to get one more uh, lecture tomorrow on the actual, the, the actual field, the, the technical field of genetics. Right? But with that, uh, I think uh, this is a neat part of the course. It's interesting, very relevant and applicable, and it's not in a, uh, a theoretical cell and atoms. Now we can actually see the, the results of, of pregnancies and syndromes and twins. So um, again, almost done with the semester, so just a little bit more to go. And 